Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp kind of shows you the problems with Marvel Studio sequels and also why Marvel movies seem to work by default no matter what. And it's kind of interesting because in some ways they kind of didn't almost feel like spent as much time or thinking of the theory of this film that would differentiate it from other superhero movies, but at the same time they have enough characters and, you know, its own vibe to it that almost exists without that, but it also doesn't have that kind of interesting kind of idea of the first film which was it's a superhero movie but as a heist film within it and whether it did that that well or not I don't think it did it that well but it still had it within it they at least tried to do a heist film and in Ant-Man and the Wasp they don't really try to follow up a heist film they kind of just let this story about you know them trying to find the original wasp who've been lost in the quantum realm and see if they could get her back because in the last movie of course scott lang was able to shrink down to the quantum realm and come back so they believe that they can actually do it if it was just that plot i think this film might have worked better but it has far too many plots between like a, a woman who can like phase and like is sort of a ghost because of the quantum realm and then there's a weapons dealer person played by walter goggins and then there's the fbi things with Scott Lang's house arrest, all that kind of converging on itself. This movie kind of reminds me of something like Iron Man 2 or Thor The Dark World, the sequels that aren't Captain America sequels, basically, whereas the Captain America movies are all drastically different from one another. I think this reminds me more of Iron Man 2. Thor The Dark World, I feel like, is like the default worst one maybe at least in terms of sequels it feels sort of like iron man 2 in that iron man 2 you really think about what to do with the character of iron man as much it felt like it was more interested in the world that was going to be created with the avengers the world that he was living in it kind of did some things with him but didn't really get into it and it didn't feel like a place that iron man or us as an audience should go naturally. It just felt like another adventure. And I'm noticing that being a problem with superhero movies. It's almost like because superhero movies have broken through so much, they're like, well, let's just do just another adventure like we do in the comics. And in some ways that seems cool. Like I like that to a certain degree in Age of Ultron, but I dislike it when I come to this and then Deadpool 2, where it honestly just feels like they're just like, I don't know, it's like another adventure and we'll direct this in a very inoffensive way and it'll be decently enough entertaining that you're not going to complain, which seems to be another sort of problem I'm having with blockbusters lately, is that they're not necessarily bad. I don't think they're bad movies, but they're kind of so there in terms of like, well, the director's so good at doing like decently well done, decently put together kind of blockbuster entertainment. This sort of reminds me of things like Ready Player One and Deadpool 2 and Solo and things like that where it's just like oh I had a good time but in the end am I going to remember this Marvel's had a crazy good year and I think when you go back and go like oh hey remember 2018 with Marvel Studios they had Black Panther and they had Infinity War that's crazy they used two blockbusters in one year and they're like and they had Ant-Man and the Wasp and they're like oh I almost forget that one and this film it's not just because it's like minor and it's probably going to make a lot less money than those two and stuff it's just more that it doesn't feel like even the people making it had a like a major thing with it it just felt like another entry in the Ant-Man franchise and I find that to be so boring because you're not really doing anything interesting with it uh, you're just literally doing just another adventure and that's technically yes that is what we all wanted but I think what you really need to do is come up with okay he's done this thing the Civil War thing happened you were doing this heist movie the last time what are you going to say with Scott Lang after that and I'm not going to like try to like guess or say you know here's what they should have done I'm just saying the problem with that is that it just feels like you have taken away what was unique about it. What I think works about Marvel Studios is you have very different kinds of movies. Now the interesting thing about this though is even though it doesn't have the heist thing to differentiate it, it's world, you know, Michael Pena and Michael Douglas and everyone in and T.I. and all these people in it, it feels like its own thing despite like not really having that much different it's just like smaller stakes and different characters i think a lot of credit to that goes to peyton reed this time around because it does feel like more of a natural nuance of a marvel movie and you have to be a decent enough director to pull that off i mean like i think it's a good version of a studio film that just basically is like hey we have to do a sequel i don't think this is a complete rehash which i definitely respect 
bit on that end, but also feels like so minor and so kind of like goofy about its plot. It like has like way too many plot lines for a movie that's supposed to be the kind of more simpler, more fun Marvel movie. I, I wish they'd done more with that. And then they have like this whole family drama, and I get the idea of it's called Ant-Man and the Wasp, and it's kind of like a dual title. You're both talking about Scott Lang and Janet Van, Van Dyne. And then you're talking about uh, Hank Pym and his wife as well, because that's the quest to bring them back together. Like a film about family and longing and things like that, kind of character-wise, does actually make sense. But you're not really selling it as well. Like, that's not the theme of the movie. The theme of the movie is, like, have fun, I guess? Like, let's not take this as seriously. It feels like more of a jokey Marvel movie, really undercutting scenes to have more jokes in it, to not lose the audience because you know this plotline and this villain and all this stuff is kind of crap. Although I like the kind of ghosty quantum person I thought like how her powers uh, worked out were pretty cool and it turns out she was sort of the winter soldier or something which like never came up before but whatever because they don't say she worked for Hydra which I thought was interesting I thought that would have made sense but the idea that these movies are just another adventure it almost goes back to like when you had like 10 Tarzan movies in the 30s or something like that they're just like I don't know here's another one and that way this film works but it almost feels so like inoffensively charming where you're like okay that was a fun enough time or like if you go to see it you'll enjoy drinking your soda while watching it when it's over i don't think this is a film that's really going to make that much of an impression and ant-man was a film a lot of people had passion for not me really but a lot of other people had passion for and i think this film shows like they didn't really know entirely where to take the character and where to take these characters because they're bumping around between plot lines they're bumping around between all these things and it manages to work itself now that might be because they have two of the screenwriters from spider-man homecoming and paul Rudd and a lot of other people and I think they might be able to use you know things like Michael Pena's like next level comedy style and story tells a story or just Michael Pena in general brought this movie up but just undercutting scenes completely with jokes like that it just feels like you're almost pushing it too far it's like Ragnarok was one thing but this just feels like you're like let's interrupt it because no one cares about what these nerds gotta say and that stuff just felt like it was like going too far there weren't really as many visual gags you've probably seen them in the trailer there wasn't as much I think kind of love and care to it there wasn't as many times I can go that was probably Edgar Wright and like take you know credit away from Peyton Reed I couldn't do that this time so that sucked it felt like very much relying on the things that make Marvel so popular its character the charisma of its actors they're always pretty good at being decently entertaining now Paul Rudd's as usual very good as well as Evangeline Lilly I really like the de-aging technology between Lawrence Fishburne Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Douglas I think it probably helps because all these people were on screen when they were younger but it has such a great fun cast who clearly get along together and clearly have a lot of fun and were, are good at joking around and uh, have a good charisma and rhythm to them which seems to work really almost seamlessly with all the special effects and things like that probably more so than any of the Marvel movies except for like Guardians and Thor Ragnarok now this movie just isn't really as fun and funny and kind of light it it's just like that's kind of one of the biggest things it's like it's caring way too much for being like the simple ant-man movie and i think that's one of its biggest faults really because it's trying to pretend it's this like kind of palate cleansing more fun kind of movie and you're like oh cool you know i just sat through these big things so that would be neat and then you watch it and you're kind of like i mean if they'd done another heist thing or or something like that i would be fine with it but this just kind of just relies on the backs of charisma that's definitely the marvel way is they very much rely on charisma almost over everything almost over villains the first one very much felt like oh hey we're doing you know the superhero origin story plotline but this almost felt like oh hey we're doing the thing from these sequel movies where we have this person regretting kind of being a superhero and things like that it just felt very boring and kind of something you've seen before for me it just didn't feel very exciting it was like well, what's the point of doing these ant-man movies at a certain point you know it's just to be palate cleansers that sort of almost don't really work as that but sort of do because of your charisma and so forth it's like this is all marvel charisma is how this movie worked and that's a really fun entertaining thing to see and i'm sure if you like marvel movies you'll enjoy it but it just doesn't really as a narrative it like i don't know what it's saying entirely if it had gone really more towards the family thing i think that would have worked a lot better there's obviously allusions to that that they kind of just like get into a little bit but it's like pretty clear that this film is about family and isn't a heist film and you know you're stuck with these people who you know their different thing is that they were in a high superhero movie and in the end this just ends up being like a superhero movie where the superhero gets big and small and stuff marvel's genius is they go oh it's not just a thor movie it's a it's a fantasy superhero movie or it's not just a captain america movie it's a political thriller superhero movie 
and the original heist superhero movie and this is just like blank superhero movie and they never found out a thing to put in there like a genre to mess with like the only genre it's messing with is superhero films and it's not really it's just like sort of a funnier superhero film and like i already saw that with ragnarok and that was a lot better at doing that more organically and it felt like a change of pace in the franchise this just feels like another installment and i never loved ant-man that much so it just sort of felt like okay here we go again, I guess. It's certainly, I still enjoy these people, like, enough to maybe sit through another one, but I have no passion behind it. It almost felt like this time, in terms of the plotting and everything, almost they didn't have passion behind it. I think Ant-Man and the Wasp almost feels like Marvel's sort of afterthought. They still managed to make a decently entertaining film. I think they're on a crazy run lately, where, like, you're just like, how did we go from Homecoming to Ragnarok to Black Panther to Infinity War? It's just insane. And this just feels like, you know, the calm down where they're all like, waking up drunk off to the success of Infinity War and going like, oh man, we gotta make this, like, Ant-Man movie. Shit. Uh, we can write it in a weekend. Not that they've made it since Infinity War, but you know what I mean. It just doesn't feel like the love and the care and the interest is there. It feels like they just let Peyton Reed do what he wanted and it sort of, like, worked out for them. This almost feels like the movie they, like, fell ass backwards into and they're like, hey, it worked out, right? We're still good. We're still good. That's kind of how this movie is. I sort of like how they use Evangeline Lilly more. She should get better roles. She's a great actress. I like how they, you know, do things with the Wasp. I like some of the action sequences. But it doesn't feel as interesting and different as it did with the first Ant-Man. It sort of just feels like, okay, here we are again. And we're used to doing this at this point. It doesn't do anything new with it. I think Marvel needs to look at their most successful kind of trilogy or real franchise in terms of artistically, really, is the Captain America. America movies and maybe the Avengers films because those are all drastically different doing like another installment film just like no one's still talking about Deadpool 2 in the same way like Ant-Man and the Wasp will kind of just whisked away into the quantum realm and we'll probably not think of it unless it's like on FX and reruns or something and we're like sure why not it's weird seeing a Marvel movie that doesn't elicit such passion from people it's kind of like eh, whatever, and it feels like the movie's kind of like, I don't know, we're good, right? And you're just like, I mean, I guess we're good. I guess we're good, Marvel. And you're like, uh, we'll just put up with this, I guess. You know, it's not so bad enough that we're angry. It's just sort of like, maybe could you try better next time? And they're like, hey, Captain Marvel and Infinity War 2 or whatever, or Avengers 4, whatever, doesn't matter. That's sort of where we are. This is just like a movie we're all sitting through, and it doesn't really elevate itself much past that, but it's not so bad that it's like one of those first two Thor movies or nothing. I'm just kind of like letting this go into my existence, and I'm going to just let this time pass me and i had a decent enough time with it so in the end you're just sort of like okay ant-man okay all right so if you've seen ant-man and the wasp and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to